We studied some this morning in the book of Isaiah, chapter 55. Very familiar scriptures here. We enjoyed studying it over and brought back a lot of things that we've heard. And maybe we can pass some of them on to you. And as we read the word, maybe it'll be a blessing to each one that hears it. Not only here, but out in the world. Uh, they might, uh, someone out there somewhere, be busy with hope. Use this word to convict our souls. Let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer this morning. Our Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity that you've given us. And pray, Father, that as we read thy word, that it will go out, Father, and not only into the ears of the church here, but to the ears of the world, Father, and that there might uh, be some out there that uh, would hear this word, and Father, that they might be uh, convicted of their sins. Thank you so much for this day and all your blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. We thank you and, and pray that we might be found doing thy will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Turn to, well, uh, Isaiah 55, verse 1. Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and that hath no money, come ye, buy and eat. Ye come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread? And your labor for that which satisfies not, hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your souls delight itself in the fatness. Amen. Incline your ear and come unto me. Hear, and your soul shall live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the mercy, sure mercies of David. And we this morning uh, uh, see this as the, an Old Testament uh, thing. A lot of people will say, well, that's Old Testament. That ain't got to do with us. But listen, God's promise is for everyone. He, he made a promise. He'll keep to ever, everyone. And so we're under this uh, We're under this with this promise that he will uh, give us this water of life. This, uh, we don't have to labor for our salvation. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's ours to ask for and to receive. And so we should this morning be jumping for joy uh, mm -hmm. you know because that's <clears throat> that's our eternal that's our eternal hope and uh this morning uh if we ever ever needed a, a, an encouragement and a, a, a desire to uh, walk a little bit closer to the lord it would be this day right because yesterday's gone and tomorrow we'll never see mm -hmm. but the thing of it is we need to be closer to the lord so he said here in verse one whole and i i, I wanted to <clears throat> Look this word up, and I, I did. And they used to, when they was plowing old mules, they say, "Whoa, miss stop." Well, I think what they did, they miss, they misunderstood what they're supposed to say. They're supposed to say "hope" instead of "whoa." But anyway, that's the sad point. I just thought of that. But hope is a call or cry to attack, attack, to attract attention or give notice of approach used after designation. And so here he is saying this whole, and he's meaning stop, mm -hmm. and he's meaning listen, and he's meaning this is a very important thing that he's trying to say because he received it of the Lord and he's, he's writing it down and it's very important to him, to him. And so he said hold or wait or stop and listen. Everyone that thirsteth Come ye to the waters. And very important this morning, uh, the waters he's talking about is the, the water of salvation. Or, and everyone has an opportunity. Everyone has a calling because he says everyone that thirsteth. Now that, that don't mean that everyone is going to be thirsting in this world for salvation, but everyone that is thirsting, everyone that has that call, everyone that has a desire, everyone that reads God's word mm -hmm. and the Holy Spirit speaks to their souls, listen, you have this opportunity to come to the fountain of water, to the Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, to pray unto him the sinner's prayer and ask him to forgive you of your sins and to save your soul. And this is what the writer is trying to say to the uh, 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 the readers or the uh, people that he's talking to. He says, Hold everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money. And of course, again, 
we already said a little bit about this, but it's 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 grace is free, uh, mercy is free, and listen, when we come, we don't have anything that uh, we can do like Simon the sorcerer when he he asked them how much money uh, pay them to let him. Uh, baptize some of them in the Holy Ghost where he could do it to us. But listen, we come freely and we come without any anything except a sinful soul and we beg his forgiveness and we ask him for his mercy. And listen, it's free. It don't cost, I don't know, I, I don't think you can find anybody that says it costs them anything. Uh, but listen, here's the thing of it. Once you receive it, you need to have the desire to work for the Lord. You need to, you need to have the desire to uh, be, a, uh, be a worker and a laborer for him because uh, that, is, that is part of the agreement when he calls you and when he saves your soul, you're his child and you are, uh, in other words, you're his slave and you are to Amen. go out and to uh, tell others your experience that you had with the Lord and maybe help someone and God's word, it says in here, it never returns unto him void. And so when you say something to someone out here concerning their soul, you can be assured of this one thing. It won't return void. Amen. Now listen, it may return void in the ears of some of these uh, of, of dumb pe our, our people that came here. But listen, when you stand before God and you uh, are, are there and the rewards are passed out or, or when whatever praise you get from God, listen, he is going to remember you that that thing that you did in his name, if you do it with a true heart and you, you do it for the glory of God, he will remember this thing. And so listen, his word will never return void. And your word that goes out to and, and praising him, listen, you, it will come back one of these days and you may see it in your family. You may see it in a stranger. You may see it uh, even, uh, could be even in the White House. But to listen, the thing of it is that word, that word has a meaning to it and it, it, will, it, it may, it's worth saying. And so remember when you, you get this freely, then you you give it freely. Amen. And so this morning, when when we when we have to uh, have an opportunity to speak to someone, we need to do it with a free heart. We need to do it not thinking, well, I'm going to boast of my flesh a little bit, how good I am, and all this. And I'm going to tell you, listen, that's that's out of the question. Amen. What you need to do is, and you know it yourself that we need to do it with a free heart and we need to talk to these people with, a, with the love of God in our hearts so that they might uh, do as we have done and that is to uh, be saved from sin. And so he said here, he, he that hath no money, come ye, buy and eat. And so what is it he's saying when he's saying come buy? Well, he's saying this this morning that when you come, you're offering something there this morning. You're offering to him a desire to hear his word and to hear and to be saved. And so listen, there's nothing, there's no cost to it this morning. But he says, uh, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Now I want to read to you something this morning over in the book of John. In John 7, if you I'm going to turn, or if you don't, well, just listen to what I'm John 7, 37. <clears throat> In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood crying, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Amen. So this morning, here is the free, this is the free offering that he's giving to us. It don't cost you anything, but he says, if any man thirsts, let him come unto me and drink. So there's nothing there. But, and he says, and he that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly, out of your mouth, out of your soul, will 
flow rivers of living water. And mm -hmm. living water is the word of God uh, uh, telling people about their lost condition or uh, encouraging them to uh, uh, search, search the scriptures or to pray or whatever. These are the things that he's calling living water. And so he said here, but this spake he of the spirit, which they that believed on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not given yet, not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. And so this is what Jesus was telling them here on earth. And, and the Holy Spirit is a, a lot of times what comes to your, your spirit and, and tells you. But he says here that the Holy Spirit did not come yet. But he would come after Jesus died on the cross because Jesus said, unless I go, I cannot send the Holy Spirit. And so the Holy Spirit came later. And that's the one this morning when you sin, if you're a Christian, that's the one that troubles your heart. That's the one that says, hey, uh, you shouldn't have done that. Mm -hmm. And so back in our lesson now, he says in verse uh, chapter, uh, verse 2, Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfy not? And these things here that he's talking about, spending money or spending your time, spending your effort for something that is... Uh, as the old saying is not worth a hill of beans. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, he's saying, uh, don't satisfy. But listen, when right. you, this morning, when you are a child of God, and listen, you have an opportunity to uh, speak to someone uh, if they ask you or something, or if you can just tell them something. Listen, that's the greatest buy that you can buy because it makes you feel so good within yourself knowing that you were able to help them in that way and it's better than any money that you could give them because they take the money and spend it but listen mm -hmm. that thing that you give them stays in their heart and listen they can go away and say well uh, I understand or I know more than I did know and listen the Holy Spirit can take that word and he can multiply it, he can, he can brush it up, he can shine it up and make it look so great to them. Listen, that before you know it, but they'll probably come back to you or, and tell you, hey, I was saved and I appreciate your effort and, the, and the, what you said to me. And listen, that's the greatest buy, that's the greatest money that you can spend in this world. Because uh, these others, he says here, uh, and you labor, in, and you, your labor for that which satisfies not. And so this morning, if you're out there and you're just want to tell somebody, but you're ashamed of the Lord, and listen to that, you say, no, ain't nobody. Yes, people are ashamed of the Lord, and they're ashamed to speak His name. And listen, they're afraid of the rebuke of, of something that they'll lose or something like that, but they're ashamed of it. And so here He says. And your labor for that which satisfy not hearken diligently unto me, and eat that, eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. And I, 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 I want you to I want you to see this this morning. This is how that you have a fat soul. This is how you have a fat soul. If you if, you know people worry about gaining weight and all this, but listen, this is a good fat. Mm -hmm. This is like the cholesterol and, and all this. So you have a bad and a, and a good cholesterol. This is a good. This is a good fat. And listen, you gain you gain so much by e expressing yourself about Amen. something that you know in the Word of God. And so He says here, incline your ear and come unto Me. Here and your soul you shall live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even even the sure mercies of David. I want to see something this morning in the book of Psalms, if I can find it real easy. Psalms 89, I found something I wanted to read. Uh, Psalms 89, 19. 89, 19. <clears throat> Then thou speak, speakest in vision to the, thy holy one, and saith, I have laid help upon one of the, that is mighty. I have exalted one chosen out of the people. I have found David my servant. With my holy oil have I anointed him. Let me look and see. It don't sound like I'm 
I'm what I wanted, 89.19. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm right on. Okay, then we'll get to it. In verse uh, uh, 21, with whom my hand shall be established, my arm also shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not exact upon him or, or deceive him. And, and this is talking about David, and it's talking about you two this morning that are saved. It says here, the enemy shall not exact or deceive you or outwit you upon him, nor the son of wickedness afflict him. I, and I will beat down his foe before his face and plague them that hate him. Amen. But my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him, and in my name shall his horn be exalted. I will set his hand also in the sea and his right hand in the rivers. And so why I wanted to read this for you, this is something that God promised David. And, of course, he promised David a lot of things. But the thing of it is, I, I, this morning, I, I believe this morning that when we are saved, we, we are connected and we're under this promise. And God is promising here to protect David and to not let the devil deceive him and things of this nature. And so this morning, when we, when we read this scripture over here this morning, the sure mercies of David, listen, we have that sure mercy of God too. We have that, that, that protection and that goodness in our, and that, that uh, protection that we have. And so he says in verse four, behold, I have given him for a witness to the people, a leader, and commander of the people. Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not, and a nation that knew not thee shall run unto thee because of the Lord thy God and for the Holy One of Israel, for he hath glorified thee. Amen. Now, after saying all this, and after he said this about the laboring and all, he says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found, Call ye upon him while he is near. In 2 Corinthians 6, 1, if I can turn over there to it, 2 Corinthians 2, 1. I wanted to try to read something here uh, to you. 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 6. Okay, 2 Corinthians 6. <clears throat> Let me get this all together here. 6. One and two. Okay. Uh, Dare any of you having a matter against another, go to the law again before the unjust and not before the saints. Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world and if the world shall ju be judged by you, you, by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matter? Know ye not that he that we shall judge angels how much more things that pertain to his life. If then ye have judgments of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. I speak to your shame. It is, it is so that there is not a wise man among you. And <clears throat> I don't think that's the one. I know why. It's, uh, sorry. Turn to 2 Corinthians 6 1. I'm sorry, I just didn't look at my note right. 2 Corinthians 6, 1, when we then as workers together with the deceit or beg you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted and in a day of salvation have I secured or helped you. The uh, behold now is the accepted time. Behold now is the day of salvation. Amen. Giving no offense in anything that the minister be not blamed. And this is why I wanted to read this because here he says here, seek ye the Lord in verse six of our lesson. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. And so this morning, we see these things as, as, uh, as the writer here is trying to t tell us about all of these things that we have that, that, we can, that we can do and all of this. And then he says, 
here, seek you the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so this is our, this is the thing that we need to do each day, every day uh, of our life is to seek the Lord, to pray for his leadership, his guidance, and, and ask that he would uh, help us in the things that we should uh, be helped in. And we need to express our sorrows for disappointing him and, and all this. So he said here, uh, in verse 7, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. Now, Amen. he says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. Amen. Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. I got a, a, a scripture here in Acts 22. I want Acts 8, I'm sorry, Acts 8, 22. Don't burn with me. I'm not reading it right. 8, 22. In, in Acts 8, verse 22. Repent, therefore, of this thy wickedness, and pray, God, if perhaps the thoughts of thine heart may be forgiven thee. For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness, and in the bond of iniquity. Then this was Simon that they were talking to. I said, mentioned a while ago about wanting to uh, pay money for that he could have the Holy Spirit come upon him. Then answered Simon and said, Pray ye to the Lord for me, that none of these things which ye have spoken come upon me. And listen, this morning, you know, uh, people sometimes they get in the in, in, in the wrong way or some of them think they're saved and they won't say because I, I don't think Simon was ever saved here but anyway uh, they realize that they're in the wrong and uh, sometimes uh, we have to have a brother or go to a brother mm -hmm. or someone and ask them to pray for us and to help us or to pray with us and, and, and that the Lord would forgive us of these things because listen we need to stay in tune with the Lord as, as, Amen. as much as we can. So he said here, For I perceive that you are in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. Then answered Simon and said, Pray ye to the Lord for me that none of these things which you have spoken come upon me. And they, when they had heard, testified and preached the word of the Lord, returned to Jerusalem and preached the gospel in many villages in Samaria. So, we see here with one of the uh, one one of the men here that uh, he said, uh, "My ways are not your ways," and uh, we know this morning that God's ways is perfect. Our ways is not perfect, and so here he says in verse eight, uh, "My thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways." Amen. Lord, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. Amen. And my thoughts than your thoughts. And so Psalms, we'll, we'll turn again to Psalm 103 and uh, see if I can find, uh, find it. <clears throat> Psalms 103. All right. Turn with me just a minute. Psalms 103 and verse 1. He says here, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Amen. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all his diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercy. And he's writing this thing, and he's this is some of the things that God does for us. Amen. And this is some of the reason why that that we can come to the fountain and drink. We can we can uh, go out and share that drink with others. And this is because this is the reason that we should want to do this is because uh, in verse five he says, "Who satisfies." thy mouth with good things Amen. so that thy youth is renewed like the eagle and the Lord execute righteousness and judgment for all those that are oppressed 
he made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and plenteous in mercy. And he will not chide or strive, neither will he keep his anger forever. Amen. So listen, this morning when when times come on you and you uh, kind of fall by the wayside and uh, get it out of the will of the Lord, and listen, the, the, you know, you, you try to pray and you try to act and you try to uh, get things right with you and the Lord and you tell him you're sorry and all this. But listen, it don't seem like nothing, nothing happens. Well, listen. The, the, the scripture there said he will not strive with man always. Mm -hmm. He, the Holy Spirit, will come when he sees when when the heart gets sin, sincere enough. And so here he says in verse nine, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. And so his thoughts are much greater than ours. Amen. So we, we we can depend on the Lord. Uh, and so here for. As the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Speaking of himself, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. Amen. But it shall accomplish that which I plead, please, and it shall prosper in the things for to I send it. And so this morning, <clears throat> if you have an opportunity to be a witness to someone <clears throat> and you have that desire, listen, God is God is sending sending that message through you. Mm -hmm. Listen, it, it ought to make you it ought to make you jump over a fence. Amen. You'd be so happy because listen. When you're used of God and you know that you're being used of God, listen, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's better than any candy you can have. Amen. You know, that's better than anything you can eat. And he says here, for in verse 12, <clears throat> verse 12, for ye shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you in singing, Amen. and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorns shall come up the fir tree, and instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree, and it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. And this Amen. is this is the blessing. This is the blessings that you will receive when you uh, drink of that drink of that free water, and you eat of that free bread, and you. Pass it on to someone else and help them. That's this is some of the things that he's promised us here in the last thing uh, up here. Instead of the thorn shall come the fir tree, and uh, and instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree, and it shall be to the Lord for a name, for a name and an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. All right. So that's our lesson for this morning. We ask that you would bow your head just a minute. We want to thank the Lord for it. Our Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity. And we just pray, Father, that uh, this word, uh, Father, will, will go out and, and can be a blessing. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.